and we're going to deal with the book of Romans a lot. So uh, I'm not sure if you read the book of Romans. This will be a good time to read the book of Romans because we're going to be dealing with Romans a lot. Uh, one of the first scriptures I want us to go to is Romans 8, just as uh, to show our base scriptures, Romans 8. Starting with the first verse. Romans 8 verse 1 it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally what? Minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually what? Minded is life and peace. Verse 6, it talks about being in what? Spirit and being in the what? Flesh. You're going to think through one of the two in your mind. You're either going to think through the what? Flesh or you're going to think through the what? Spirit. If you think through the flesh, then your result is going to be what? Death. If you speak through the spirit, then you're going to have what? Life and what? Peace. Notice the difference there. Through the flesh, you get death. Through the spirit, not only did you get, you get life, but then you get what? Peace. So, when you look within yourself, the battleground here is between the flesh and what? The spirit. Where is that battleground going to take place? In your mind. So now you have to look and choose where your thought process is going to come from. Is it going to come from through your flesh? Or is it going to come through your spirit? And one way you can know the difference is, is when you're coming through your flesh. You know, can you sit over in the center so everybody kind of like together? Sure. Um, when you're thinking through your flesh, it's going to only equal one result, which is what? Death. Death. So to be carnal minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is what? Right. So watch this. The mind is the seat of all spiritual and fleshly conflict. So when you look at spiritual warfare, when you look at the battleground, you say, I'm battling, I'm battling. Guess where the field is in your mind? Because that's where the war is taking place. And it's over control of your mind. Because whoever has your mind has you. You ever been in a relationship and you were so thrown in that relationship that when that person said jump, you was jumping before they even asked you to jump because you knew they was going to ask you to jump. You knew what they wanted before they even asked for what they wanted. You would have bought what they needed before they even needed the need. Why? Because you, you, they had your mind. You ever had somebody to be able to control you? They know how to punch your buttons and all that. Why? Because they have your mind. And when somebody has your mind, guess what? They don't have to have any shackles on you. Because they have your mind. So when you look at spiritual warfare, the battleground is your mind. Carnal and spirit. Because if, if the devil says, the devil says, if I can get your mind, then I can have you to do whatever I want you to do, at the same time, the spirit is trying to have your mind by faith. You see the difference? When the devil has your mind by flesh, if it's by flesh, what is the only thing the flesh has? The flesh only can be controlled by uh, 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 taste, touch, feel, see the senses. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Because it's your flesh that you can relate to the world that you're in. 
So what Satan does to control your mind is to keep you uh, minded on sensual perception. How you feel. How, how, how you see it. Because if I can get your mind focused on sensual perception, then you will never operate by faith. Well, y'all with me? When I operate by faith, I'm no longer concerned about what it feel like, what it looked like, how it felt, because now I'm going by what I know, and what I know is my faith, and I'm going by the Word of God. So when you look at Romans 8, when it says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, is because when I'm walking in sensual perception, you know, because there's going to be a conflict. Think about this. Think about when you did when you uh, when you uh, you 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 really don't come to know God until you have a conflict. Think about that. It's, it, 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 it's a situation. You just don't wake up and say, "Oh God, okay, I guess I just want to know you this way today." <laughs> la 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 la. I want to know you as a healer today, God. So uh, let me do something to make myself sick. The point is, even for sickness to come, it's a conflict. So it was, a, it, it's a, every time it's a situation, it's a conflict that draws you to him. Watch this, past your sensual perception. If you stay stuck in your sensual perception, then that's when you sit there and say, woe is me. Are y'all with me? See what God does, and, and, and God is 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 uh, His method is like no other. What God will do is place you in something luxurious called paradise. You know, He He just He just sets you there. He just He just He just Adam didn't ask where to go. <clears throat> He, he created it and, and said, Adam, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put you in. So what God does, he creates it for you, then he puts you in. In other words, everything you need is already prepaid. Because when I created it, I created it with you in mind. In other words, it's built just for you. Now, I created you and, and have you as mankind, but you created after my likeness and image. In other words, you was created spirit first. But you needed something to be able to relate into what I built for you. And you can't relate to it by just spirit. So what I have to do is build a casing. So you can understand what the, what the, what the, the feel of a, 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 of a cool breeze is. Because if you're in spirit, you can't feel a cool breeze. I, I need you to know and be able to enjoy the different colors of nature. In spirit, you can't enjoy that. But what I'm going to do, i got to create a casing where you'll be able to see and enjoy all the different colors and, and, and appreciate a cool breeze and, and pre appreciate touch and feel when things touch your hands so you'll know the difference. To even be able to, to be able to relate to the smell of a rose. You can't do that in spirit. So what I'm going to do, since I created this uh, euphoric uh, world for you, what I'm going to do is, is, is build a casing so you can enjoy it. So what God did, he reached down in the dust of the ground and, and, and took dirt and made a casing. Then the Bible says he breathed nefesh, the spirit, into man, and man became a living soul. In other words, he now put his spirit that he created man in his likeness and image, breathe it into mankind so mankind could enjoy it here on earth. And then the scripture says he gave them dominion and power over the earth. He gave them dominion and power where? Over the earth. In other words, God said, I'm not going to have no control over it. I'm going to give it to you. And God is bound by his what? Words. So if he says, I'm giving you dominion over it, then guess who got the power over it? Who? Mankind. Who's created in my likeness and image, spirit first, but dwell in a casing so you can enjoy what I created for you, thy will be done on 
earth as it is in heaven. In other words, I created something for you to rule just like I rule the heavens. And I want you to enjoy it. But I put something inside of you called a mind. And I gave you something called free will. So what man does, man looks and he, he says, you know what, Adam, to exercise your right as mankind and to show you that I've given you the same authority like I have in heaven and, and this earth is yours. What I want you to do, every creepy thing that creepeth on the earth, I'm going to bring it past you and whatever you speak over it, that's what it will become because I did not create you to lie, but whatever you name it, that's what it is because a name reveals authority, nature, and character. So when you name it, that's what it is, because you, your, your words create, just like I spoke, let there be, and there was. So when you speak, it will become what you spoke. But I'm going to bring everything uh, 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 by you so that you can name it, so you can exercise your power. And so what, he, what God did, he said, because I need you to use your mind. And it isn't amazing that every creepy thing that creeps on the earth that, that God created and brought before Adam, Adam didn't name the same thing twice. And everything he named, watch this, he remembered what he named. He never went back and called a horse a cat. <laughs> he never went back and, 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 and called a dog a, a, a giraffe. He knew exactly what he named it when he saw it. In other words, he now think about all the bugs and the mosquitoes and all that. And he had named all this stuff, and he remembered what he named it. Why? Because God created him in his likeness and image, and God is so uh, 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 defined as that that he says, I know that hair right there. <laughs> you, you, can you imagine what Adam's mind was like. We look at our mind now, we can't, we, I mean, you know, we go crazy. <laughs> we can't remember what happened 30 minutes ago. We can't even remember what we saw 15 minutes ago. If somebody was to walk in this room for five seconds and walk out, we all would uh, have a different description on what they had on. Imagine the mind of Adam that was able to name every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth, did not get it confused, and did not forget. Imagine what his mind was like. Watch this. And would meet with God in the cool of the day. That was his only direction. <laughs> Your job is to meet with me in the cool of the day. No job. You just walk around and enjoy what I gave you. And, 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 and notice Adam did not uh, uh, name any of the creepy things that creepy wife. Notice that he, he, he never got anything out of line or confused. But one thing Adam noticed, he said, everything has a partner. But I don't. How can you be alone when you got God? And God said, it's not good for mankind to be alone. <clears throat> now, God is everywhere. Adam, I'm meeting with you in the cool of the day. So what did he mean that it's not good for mankind to be alone? What he was saying is, you need somebody that you can relate to, fellowship with. Every creepy thing had something it could relate to. To, but Adam didn't have anybody or anything that he could relate to. You ever been somewhere by yourself and you saw some stuff and you wish you had somebody you could just, man, I wish you would have seen this. If you would have just been here, ooh, 
if you just would have saw, let me take a picture, but the picture really don't give it justice to what the moment was, but because you was by yourself, you had nobody to share it with. So you can have all the money in the world, you can buy the house and put in all the furniture, but there's going to come a day when you walk through the house, and you're going to feel alone. So God said, it's not good for man to be alone. I will create for him a help meet. So he put man's to sleep, man to sleep and, and became a surgeon and, and cut him open and pulled out a rib. And then he became a designer and formed one man. Then after he formed one man, he put on his priestly robe and said, who takes this woman to be thy wife? And he marries them and he becomes now a father. And now my only job is to still meet with him in the cool of the day. But because there is a serpent who knows the only way that I can get to mankind is now I got to find and negotiate and get a body to dwell in to come down on earth. So he makes negotiations with a snake. Because he you knows he cannot be on earth as spirit and he'd be out of line. He'd be here illegally. So let me get in a body, because the spirit needs a body. Let me get in the body of a snake. And now let me tempt Eve, watch this, through her sensual perception. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Now the tree was, God said, don't eat of it. Don't even so much touch it. Or you will what? Surely die. But what the serpent does, he tells her, you won't surely die. You will become like God. Knowing the difference between good and evil. He's playing with her. <coughs> and that's what Satan does. What he'll do, he, 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 he ever, and I know you have because I have. You ever looked at a thing you knew was wrong? Then you looked at something else over here and you knew it was wrong? But because you felt guilty, you took the lesser of the wrong? You took the lesser of the two, and then you rationalized it in your mind. And when you rationalized it, you came up with reason. And reason was, you better be glad I didn't do this over here, that I just did this. Because I could have done that, but I didn't do that, but I did. And that's all Satan wanted to do is mess with your sensual perception, control your uh, senses through your flesh to get you to do wrong, when God at the same time is trying to control you by your spirit, by your faith. Now you see why there's a conflict. And that's where the conflict comes in. And watch this, that conflict comes in daily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it doesn't stop. It, it, it's not going to let up. It's not going to ease up. And, and woe unto you that thought when you got saved that everything was going to be hunker door. You weren't going to have no more conflicts. You weren't going to have any more trouble. Ooh, I can just, you know what? I got saved. All I have to do now is come to church. And everything is going to be all right. <laughs> right. That now all I got to do is come to church. Go to church. They told me if I if I believe and I went up there and took the preacher's hand and confessed, yes, I believe in Jesus. Yeah, and now all I got to do is come to church and everything. Everybody in church so nice and it, everybody looks so lovely. Everybody got a nice car. They dress good. They smell good. There's some crazy folks that sit in the back, but I ain't worried about them. But everybody else is so nice. They look good. Church is clean. Everybody seems like they sweet. Then, yeah, I'm going to be a member of this church. I'm going to self I'm going to be a member of this church. And everything is going to be all right. But you didn't read the fine print. <laughs> and the fine print says that the, that the rain comes on the just 
and the unjust. And the truth of the matter is, I think I have more issues now that I'm saved mm. than I did before. Now, why is that? The reason for that is because before I was saved, whatever my carnal mind wanted to do, that's what I ran with. But now that I'm saved, there's a spirit mind in me that's saying, don't do that anymore. But my flesh is saying, do you remember that? you remember that? Remember how good you felt when you did that over there? Remember how fun it was when you did that? But now the spirit man said, you can't do that no more. You got to come over here. Can't do that no more. You got to come up. But, but you know, I had fun when I was doing that. I remember. I got pictures. Don't y'all remember? I, no I remember how that was. But the spirit man is saying, you can't do that. And so now the war is taking place in your and now watch this. Now the scripture says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. One minute you come, next minute you want to be spirits. A la Facebook. <laughs> In the morning, praise God. Thank the Lord for another day. God has blessed me to see another day. God is so good to me. Praise God. By the afternoon, for that so-and-so that cut me off in the middle of the road that drive this, bleep, bleep, bleep you. And for so-and-so that keep talking trash, I know who you are. I know what you said. da 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 and you like, just a few hours ago, <laughs> it was God this. Matter of fact, it's, 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 you know, today, Wednesday, it's going to be God today because it's church night. <laughs> but come Friday club night, and what I can't understand, I see a picture of you at church with a dress on. But it's identical to a same picture I saw of you with a beamless background oh, with all your tattoos showing. Now, oh, <laughs> beamless are closed. Just closed. When one minute you 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 lifting God and quoting scripture and quoting your favorite praise and worship song, but over here, your words is far from the church. Mm. You're double-minded. Yeah. So if your mind is double, then your tongue will be double. double. Let's go to, uh, so wait a minute, then first. Uh, look at Romans 7, verse 7, starting with 17. A lot of times we think we can just come to church and lay our sins at the altar and everything's going to be all right. All right, God, here are my sins. You deal with it. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but before you get out the parking lot, over here in Antioch, Pastor Wesley one day drove another car to church and decided to go through the main parking lot. <laughs> If you want to find out how many people are saved at your church, <laughs> drive through the parking lot. Now, y'all know Antioch, nice size church with nice size milk. <clears throat> he said it took him 15 minutes, and I might be cutting it short, to get from that side entrance to get to his on the other side. Because people were driving crazy, cutting each other off, looking at each other crazy in the parking lot. <laughs> so now that really made me wonder why the scripture said enter into his gates with. Because if you can't get it right in the parking lot, you definitely not going to have any praise in the court. Right. 
If I'm cutting people off in the parking lot, arguing in the parking lot, what makes you think from the time I park my car and I walk into the building that all of a sudden I'm going to be holy? When my mind wasn't right from the time I got on the premises. Romans 7, what I say, 17? 17. Watch what Paul says. Now then, it is no more that do it, but sin that dwells in me. You got to take ownership. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells what? No good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. In other words, I know it's good there. I don't know how to exercise it. Have you ever been in a situation where it's something you want to do, but you didn't know how to quite get it done? Mm -hmm. Verse 19, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that's what I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more that do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then what? A law. That when I would do good, evil is present with me. Remember, he's bound by law. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my what? Mind. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my what? Members, my flesh. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? In other words, he's saying, I'm battling between the old covenant and the new covenant. Y'all remember we went over that? I'm battling by the law of sin, of, of the commandments that, 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 uh, that produces death against now the spirit and the resurrection of Christ that, that, that produces life. Now it's a fight. Because my mind on one hand is, is following after the flesh. And when I wanted to do good over here, I did wrong. And now I find a law that condemns me of what I did wrong. Now I'm guilty and I, and I deserve death. Now it's hard for me to get back right because I got this guilt hanging over my mind. You, you, you see what I'm saying? You, you do wrong and then guilt does what? Keeps you in bondage. Why? Because I got this law hanging over me that said I did wrong. But then you got a new law as a believer in Jesus Christ that said, I paid the price for that. You are free. I'm applying grace to your life. Pick up the pieces and move on. But because of guilt, it keeps you in bondage. And where does the battleground take place? In your mind. And watch this. Guilt makes you feel Condemned. You see what I'm saying? Back to the sensual perception. Where the grace of God and the Spirit of God makes you free. Are you with me? It makes you free. In other words, I can walk in that freeness. Are y'all with me? So now I don't have to go by what I'm feeling condemned. Now I can be what? Free. But it now comes to your mind. All right? Uh, so the only altar that you have is within yourself. So when you go within the altar, within yourself, that's where it has to take place. That's, that's, that's where it goes, in your mind. So when I go and I have to deal with, with my sins and in prayer, that's within me. It's not a physical place that I get up and say, okay, I'm going to put all my burdens right here and walk out. Uh-uh, when you walk out, it's still on your... And until you get it off your mind and, and get out of that bondage, will God be able to, to, to take control. So the mind is where we wrestle with, 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 the, with the flesh and with the spirit. Uh, let's go to um, Romans chapter 2. I'm sorry, go to Romans 12, not 2, but Romans 12. <coughs> Romans.
Romans 12. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your what? Mind. Mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You got to get out the box of your fleshly mind. You, you, you got to quit seeing everything through your sensual perception. Your sensual perception is here for you to enjoy the earth, enjoy the world and everything in it, but don't let it control your mind. And that's the only tool that the enemy has to control you, is your sensual perceptions. By feeling guilty. By indulging in the things of your flesh. Why? Because how it makes me feel, how it makes me look. So that's why I do this over here, and at the end of it, you feel what? Worthless, because guess what? It was worthless anyway, because it was coming through your flesh. Are, are y'all with me? You ever just been, you know, you, you depressed, or whatever hurt, whatever it is you want to call it, and you went on a binge, or whatever it is that your flesh like, whether it's shopping, whether it's eating, whether it's sexual, whether uh, uh, it's drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, you just went and indulged in your flesh. And when you got done, you felt dirty, worthless. Why? Because there's no, there's no benefit. You, you understand what I'm saying? There's no benefit. I mean, as soon as you got done doing whatever it was you do, you got in the car and you just like, why did I do that? <laughs> that was stupid. And now guilt has set in. Now, you, now you're being controlled by the guilt. And, and, and what Paul is, is telling us to do, don't be conformed to the world because that's what the world does. The world just gives in to any and everything. But be conformed by the renewing of your mind. So now that when the devil comes and the devil is saying, you know what, you got to do this, you got to do this. It's going to feel so good. It looks so good. It's going to do this. But then the spirit mind says, don't do that because it's worthless. You're not going to benefit anything out of it. You're going to feel empty. You're going to feel worthless. You're going to feel less than what you are now. And, I mean, seriously. You will sit there and stress yourself out. Over being obedient or disobedient. Because of the war that's going on in your mind. Ain't that something? <clears throat> and the thing is, we will allow Satan to win that battle. Watch this. While, the, while God is sitting over here saying, I got my spirit in you. If you just walk on faith, <coughs> you're going to feel better about it at the end. Come out this world. You're not, you're, not, you're not of this world. I got something higher for you. But you will never experience if you, watch this, you will never understand, uh, disciples, what it feels like for water to tickle the bottom of your feet as you walk on it, as your mind stay earthly minded. In order for Peter to walk on the water, he had to get out his mind. He had to extend his mind to even think that it's possible. Lord, if that's be you, bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. Now imagine what it had to take place in his mind. Come on now, I mean, <coughs> for him to say, the thing that everybody else sink in, you standing on top of, walk. It's holding you up when you're supposed to be sinking in it. Imagine the faith that it took 
Lord, if that's you, bid me to come. How many times y'all have said, God, if this you talking to me, then tell me to do this. <laughs> like you negotiating with God. <laughs> Lord, if it's you, then I need to see this, and it got to be just like this, and it got to happen before 5 o'clock, because at 5 o'clock, <laughs> Then God do it, and you still sitting up. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you shall think. Right. Bam to the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it's not funny, but it's real. Because see what God is saying. God is saying, I want you to experience the supernatural, but you can't do it by being carnal minded. I want a greater work you shall do, but you can't do greater when you're carnal minded. Watch this. Nobody comes to see ordinary. Nobody. Tell you what. This is just, and this, this is no offense toward them, but I'm just going to do this. Them, I love you. You're my sister. <laughs> if, if we put Thelma's picture on a poster, live at concert, at Liberty, Thelma. $30 a ticket. Who gonna be here? Thelma. Thelma. Yeah. And us that love Thelma. But you take that same poster, take Thelma face off of it, put Alicia Keys face on it, who gonna be at Liberty? Everybody that can fit and sit in here for $30. <laughs> You, 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 you see what I'm saying? Because people want to see extraordinary. Watch this. So why do you think people don't come to church? Because they're not seeing extraordinary. They're not seeing the supernatural <coughs> that we confess. They're not seeing the supernatural that's demonstrated. What they're seeing is natural. So why should I come to your church? What makes your church different from any other church? Because I can go to the mega church and it looks better and I might see a superstar at the mega church. You know, Karen Clark may show up. You, 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 Kirk may be there. Or I got wind that Kirk goes to this church or Cowboys go to this church, so I'm going to go to that church to be in the mix because there's really nothing different about it, but I can be seen. But I guarantee you, if your church becomes a supernatural church, where the evidence of God is being demonstrated and, and strange things are happening that cannot be explained, oh, then people going to come and say, what's, 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 what's going on over you see what I'm saying? But it starts with them. If, if, if we could come to church, if we can get to the parking lot <laughs> and not be carnal minded, and if we can come to the court with a praise that's not carnal, and, and what I mean by that is your, your praise is not contingent upon a product. Okay, let me give it to you this way. Your praise is not contingent upon uh, what he gave you. But your praise is just because of him being who he is. <clears throat> you know, I'm, 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 I'm coming into the gate with thanksgiving because I'm just happy of God being who he is and me being his creation. Now I have a praise that's not connected to a blessing. It's just a praise. In other words, I'm not praising for a blessing to come down. I'm just, you know, and that's where we didn't got spoiled because praises go up. Blessing over. Oh, well, let me say hallelujah then. Because <laughs> I'm waiting on my new car. <laughs> and what your mind and your mouth say? Mm -hmm. I'm broke. I ain't got no money, Tommy. I'm broke. I ain't got no money. Now, if your ATM card, your debit card, your credit card had that mind, 
when you went to swipe it, that transaction gonna say decline. <laughs> but watch this, that card has a chip in it that connects with a computer that calculates how much you have stored. Now, to, to, it, it may be $10, but the fact that you need to uh, get that $10, and you saying, I'm broke, I have no money. If the card was to take on the mind of no money, then it would turn down the $10. But because the card has a chip that says, oh, there is $10, the price is 5 we're going to take five and cover the bill. In other words, when you're walking fleshly minded, what you speak and say no to and be in condemnation to, you're going to have death on you. But when you walk in the spirit mind, now you can manifest those things that are in heaven on earth. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Why? Because I'm not walking in an earthly mind. I'm walking in what I know. What do I know? I know he'll never leave me nor forsake me. What do I know? I know by his stripes I am healed. What do I know? I know that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. So I'm not walking by what it looks like into my sensual perception. I'm walking in that I'm going to step out on this boat. And as that water tickles the bottom of my feet and the storm is still raining, I'm going to keep everything.